to the Becoming You Show with me, your host, Leah Rowling. Do you believe you are capable of choosing your future? Sometimes it takes just one person to believe in you, or you to believe in yourself. If you find yourself continuing to say, someday I will take better care of myself, only to continue living the same day over and over and over again, then you, my friend, are in the right place. I am your biggest cheerleader, inspiring you to become you, on purpose and with intention. Are you ready to create a life you love? I'm excited to share with you some big ideas that you can use today to inspire, impact, and influence your life and everyone in it. The Becoming You Show starts now. Hello, my friends. I hope you had a great week. My week was amazing, but short. Uh, Playoffs for state baseball for my mill was on Friday and it went into Monday and my kids team won state all of the feels. The hard work from coming literally from the bottom and climbing back up for an opportunity to compete for the ship was incredible to witness. The amount of team spirit and team support and team hugs almost made my mama heart burst. And my youngest was asked to play with uh, Team Iowa, all Team Iowa, and they are playing in Ohio this weekend. And I love watching them play the sport that they love and they work so hard to compete in. And it might not be baseball for you, but I hope you celebrate your life's moments as big and as full as you can. Speaking of baseball, I was coaching someone in my becoming group over this past weekend who was struggling with going to baseball games while leaving her teenage daughter at home. She asks if daughter wants to come and she doesn't. And so she feels guilty that she is away for four to five hours at a time. And when she gets home, she wants to make up for that guilt by trying to do something with her daughter and then gets upset that she doesn't want to. We've all been there, conflicting interests. I'm there almost every weekend. Which team do I go to watch? Who haven't I seen? Who might be on the mound pitching? What if I told you that there was no wrong decision? There's just the one that you make and then you make right by it. The reasons why our decisions don't seem that simple is because we think when we make decisions, we list the pros and cons, and then we select the better of the two. Unfortunately and rarely, our decisions are not made that way. Most of the time, we take a look at the cons and then decide what is the most tolerable. And when we decide from that place, that place of scarcity, our decisions will always feel not enough. That is, after all, what scarcity breeds, this feeling of lack. However, when we make decisions from a place of truth, abundance, possibility, the decision is clear. The decision feels right because there is no wrong opposing it. Does that make sense? So how do we get to abundance? That's what we're talking about today. Interestingly enough, it's not in having more it's in removing more. I'm gonna share with you three ways to get to abundance and how to stay there. The first thing we have to remove to get to abundance is this misplaced happiness in things outside of ourselves. Abundance is a state of being created by our thinking, not from anything outside of us. When my client offered up to me that she was upset that her daughter did not want to hang out with her when she got home, she placed her happiness on her child's shoulders. Do you see that? And we all do that. It's just easier to see when it's not our own situation. I reminded her that she was not upset that her child did not want to do anything. She was upset because of her thinking that she should. And there are alternative thoughts available. 
But like we do, because we have human brains that want a problem to solve, it naturally goes to scarcity. Scarcity of, should I go to baseball or should I stay home? Scarcity of not being a good enough mom, because if I was, my daughter would want to hang out with me. Scarcity of being alone, because what would she do? Someone must need me. That someone is you. You need you. You need you to honor what's true about life. And that truth is that you are the happiness maker, not anyone else. It's not even possible for someone to make you happy. Did you know this? When you own that truth, I promise you, you will change your life. You will be able to make decisions without doubt. You will be able to be present in the moment instead of worrying and ruminating about whether you are where you're supposed to be, because you will be. Your relationships will be more honest and fulfilling because you aren't using them to better your hope and you're happy. And I know when I say this, you are hearing this and you're agreeing, yes, Leah, I know this, but I don't know if we do. We give it the lip service of the nod, but we don't actualize it into our being. We have to be onto ourselves, not just in situations where we are unsure, but daily. This is not work that we do once in a while. It is something that we have to practice every single day. The brain, like any other muscle, needs to be worked. It needs to be challenged. It needs to be stretched. We wouldn't think we could just do a set of pull-ups or a set of push-ups once a month and feel really strong. We can't think we can do that with our brain either. So the thought work is required for our most abundant living. So that's the first thing. When we look to other people or things to make us happy, we lose. It's not possible, and it will no doubt keep us in the scarcity loop. So can you think of the people or the things or the situations or the circumstances that you look to count on to source your happiness and joy? And can you redirect that inward to your own mind, your own capabilities, your own needs? Secondly, we have to remove expectations that we have about the way our life should have been and how the people in it should be. Now, people challenge me on this all the time. Leah, are you telling me that I should just not have any expectations about my kids or my husbands or my employees or my life? That I should just let people behave however they want and that I should just accept and tolerate the life that I've been dealt? My answer is yes. Now, I am totally fine with you making requests and holding people accountable, but most of us have all sorts of emotions tied to our expectations of other people. And if you are one of the rare individuals that do not attach emotion to expectations, then all means, by all means, expect away. But for most of us, we rely on our expectations being met from other people to justify and validate the emotion that we have. Here's what I mean. If they do what we want them to do, then we are happy. If our kids do what we want them to do, we're happy. If our spouses do what we ask them to do, we are happy. And if they don't, we are upset. If our kids don't do what we ask them to do, we're upset. If our spouse doesn't listen to us or doesn't support us in the way that we think that he should, we are upset. We delegate our emotional well-being to the expectation of someone else. And most likely, they're not, they're not even capable of managing their own stuff. So I want you to ask yourself, where are you sabotaging your abundance with your expectations of other people? Where are you relying on other people for your emotional well-being? Where are you placing blame on others for something that is yours to own, i.e. your feelings? And I say this lovingly, no judgment, but when you can free yourself from blaming your feelings on everyone else, your situations, your life, 
you free yourself up to do something about it. It's so hard to act and choose your best life when you are blaming others for your worst. As it relates to expectations about the way our life should have been, I'm going to drop some more tough love on you. Your past is done. There are no possibilities there. They have all been actualized. The past is reality. What happened, happened. Now, I'm not suggesting that your thoughts and your feelings about what happened are not valid. They are. But I see so many people resist reality. They resist, they blame, they deny, they avoid, they defend their past in toxic ways, ways that will never free them to live the life that they want, the one that is available to them in the now for their future. I want you to want more for your future. I want you to expect more for your future for, from yourself. But when you are buried in your expectations of what your life should have been, it is hard to have a clear vision of what your life could actually be. Okay, the last thing that I want you to remove are the strong held convictions that your thoughts are true. They are valid, yes, but true, not necessarily. I want you to consider that your thoughts are not even yours most of the time. Rather, they're borrowed and they're recycled. And a lot of times they are misguiding. They spin in doubt. They spin in worry. They spin in regret. They spin in resentment. And they can be really indulgent. And if we are not onto them, if we are not questioning them daily, we don't make any progress in our life. We don't. It's really hard to progress and move forward for your future when you're operating from the conditioning of your thoughts in the past. And if you're not questioning your thoughts and asking what else could be true, you will continue to live the same day over and over and over again. Your thoughts are merely suggestions. They're not facts. And yet we make so many decisions on thoughts that not only are not true, they're not serving. They're riddled in scarcity. So what is your thought download process? How do you think about what you think about? When people ask me what I do, I say, I am a thought coach. <laughs> I teach people how to think about what they think about so that they can create and become into the very best version of who they have always been. Your thoughts are either your superpower or your Achilles heel. They will either fast track your progress or stall you out. Your thoughts are either the problem or the solution. And here's what's really interesting to me. People don't second guess getting a personal trainer for their fitness and health goals. They don't second guess having a gym membership to hold them accountable to their fitness and their physique. But the numbers are so skewed with regards to how many actually look to hire a coach to get in some sort of a mastermind or join some sort of personal development membership for their overall life satisfaction and success. We work out our arms and our abs and our butts, but, but we don't work out our mind and our emotional well-being. There is no thought school. There is no feeling school. And so if we're not doing this work every single day to really think about what we're thinking about and 
own that our thoughts are creating how it is that we're feeling and know that how we're feeling is fueling how it is that we show up in our life and the action that we take or that we don't take to make progress on our goals. Our thinking and our feeling and how we're showing up are the habits that create either the life that we want or the life that we don't. Creating and living a full and successful and happy life requires mind work. Not just on New Year's when we actually might think about our life and our New Year's resolutions and our intentions. This is work that needs to be done daily, sometimes hourly. We need to analyze and question our thoughts and consider that we could be wrong about them. Wanting to be wrong about them. And so I want to leave you with this. Scarcity thinking, like I said before, creates scarcity results. In order to get to abundance, we need to stop outsourcing our happiness in things, in people, in, in our circumstances. So many people think that we'll just get, we'll just be happier if we move. We'll get happier if we have a new job. We'll, ha- we'll be happier if we have a new relationship. But the, the things and the situations and the houses and the money They're not creating our happiness. They can't. It's not even in in the psychology. Our feelings are created by our thoughts alone. That's it. Nothing outside of us creates the experience that we have. It's all an inside job. We also have to stop creating expectation pain for ourselves. And again, like I said, I'm all about having expectations if you don't associate pain with it. If your expectations aren't creating anger and frustration and resentment, and it's hard, it's difficult for most of us to have expectations that aren't met and feel okay with it. So expect a way if that's you. If not, make requests. And if you've got kids, you hold them accountable with that request, with boundaries and with consequences. And did you know that you did not have to get upset to do that? You can just say, you know what? No, this is my boundary. This is what you were supposed to do. This is what you didn't do. And this is the consequence. But I love you. I love you. It's that easy. And I know it's not that simple. The other thing that I want you to do in order to truly step into the abundance that is available to you is to stop believing in all of your thoughts especially the ones that aren't empowering your best fuel for your action. Abundance is an inside out job that requires courageous ownership. You are worth it. You are deserving of it. Please choose it. I want to thank you for being here with me. I want to thank you for listening to this podcast. I want to thank you for making personal development a way of life, a daily practice, because when you do that, you up level your own self mastery. You, you demand more of your own personal power. And when you have that level of self mastery, You impact the world socially in a way that is profound and significant. So I thank you for being here. I also thank you for sending messages and emailing me. And I love bumping in to you all and you telling me that you watched this or listened to this and it made a difference. You made a shift. You softened the way you approached a conversation. You met with integrity, a conversation with honesty, with the whole truth. Like all of these little things, they light me up and I appreciate you and I value you and I thank you and I am grateful for you. 
And if you don't have a gym for your brain, if you don't have an accountability coach or a group of people that are going to cheerlead you on in this abundant way of living, I want you to think about joining us in Becoming. It's an online community for really brave and amazing people like yourself. And if you want more information about that, you can go to my website at www.leahrowling.com forward slash becoming. I'm also offering till the end of August free 30 minute strategy calls. I'm only offering like five a week and they fill up super quick. So go over to my website and sign up under the contact page at my website. I would love to strategize with you to really have some tangible tools, some tangible habits that you can apply today to live more abundantly, more courageously, live more connected with the people that you love and start loving living this life to the fullest. I will see you next week. I hope you have an amazing one and we will talk soon. Take care. Bye-bye. You have been listening to the Becoming You Show with me, your host, Leah Rowling, where I share big ideas to inspire, impact, and influence your life. Tune in every Friday at 11 Central on TransformationTalkRadio.com for your morning cup of coffee, the hug you never want to end, and that inspirational message that you felt was written just for you. Each show is inspiring you to become you with purpose and intention. For more information or to connect with me, visit www.leahrolling.com.